All right, gentlemen, let's make our way into Canadian Premier League. I already mentioned, by the way, in MLS, we do have to give a shout out to St. Louis, right? First ever, ever expansion side uh, to win their first four games. The Canadian Kyle Hebert on that team now gets the call up uh, to replace the injured Kamal Miller with the, uh, the Canadian uh, squad. Let's uh, continue as we can. This is what we're doing, right? We're moving from west to east, looking at CPL teams. Today, we're in central Canada. We're taking a look at Valor. Here are some of their key roster changes, and they seem to have made quite a few uh, players who are in, players who are out. And uh, let's keep this board up here as I come to you, Ollie. And I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, do you see Valor as a stronger or weaker squad this year based on these moves? I think it's almost impossible to say, to be honest with you, because like it, it's really interesting the the kind of transfer business they've done. Like they've lost obviously some really important players. Rea, Sirwa, Mikadechi mm-hmm. came in and was very good. Levi's, Moses Dyer, their all-time top scorer, Daryl Fordyce, their captain, like some some really significant names have, have gone out here. And in terms of the replacements, like Valor is kind of the only team in the CPL this offseason. When you look at that list, there's, there's not really anyone on there that's like a proven domestic starter in this league or has a bit of pedigree coming from abroad, a Canadian coming home or something like that. It's all kind of guys who I think they're taking a little bit of a gamble on. I think there's a bit of money ball going on there. Like you have Anthony Novak coming off a, a serious injury. You have guys like Polisi and Samaki, who I think are, are good players, but you know, are still kind of trying to prove themselves as being everyday starters, I think, in the CPL. You have a bunch of guys coming in from different countries abroad, various different leagues. It's really difficult to judge, but I think that's maybe part of the plan is that rather than going after, you know, the kind of bigger names, proven names, the guys with the bigger cap hits, they're trying to create a roster of maybe players who are unproven, players who are hungry, players who are going to come in and execute the way Phil Dos Santos wants to play. And if if you're Valor, like, with the reality they have in Winnipeg in terms of attracting players and in terms of, you know, the resources that they have to work with, it's probably not realistic to say we're going to be more talented than Forge. We're going to out football Forge. You know, we're going to play beautiful soccer and, and, and play them off the park. It's going to be very difficult to do that with the resources it seems like Forge has or Cavalry has compared to you. So is there a different way you can maybe go about it where I get, again, like I said, finding more kind of unproven players players who will execute a system, be really solid defensively, have a lot of leadership, press well when they don't have the ball, wondering if maybe that's kind of the pathway they're going down. And this is deliberate, that there's not necessarily a ton of proven names on that list. I think you're right, Ali. I think also, too, maybe having some hidden gems, right? Every time yeah. you look at the start of the season, you look at 22, 23-man roster, and you could pick out some gems, but there's always some hidden, some guys you never expected. I think when you look at this Valor squad, you could see that, too. What I will say about who have left, um, Sabar, leader in the back. Mm-hmm. Brett Levi's, for me, is probably one of the most underrated, talented players in the league. Very versatile, could play in the middle, could play left back. Very good player, extremely talented. But then you have Moses Dyer, for me, who playing against him was just a handful. Um, maybe for 90 minutes, he's not busy, but he's a strong boy, and in and around the box, he can make something happen. Uh, and you know, Football is just all about goals. It's all about scoring. It's about if you. It's about the eighteen. I know people talk about the middle, but can you score or can you defend well? Um, so Moses Dyer is a handful to play against, and and now Anthony Novak just coming off of a ACL injury and just moving around from Forge to Calgary and then getting settled in that valley. It's roll the dice and how long that takes. Is that five games before he feels like himself? Is that a full half of the season? Fourteen games? Does he peak at the end? Like there's there's all these question marks, but I will say that does work in their favor. And and not to be long winded, but looking at the new playoff format, Andy, um, you don't have to be the best team. Finishing fifth or fourth, there still is a chance. Ooh, That's a glimmer well, of hope. You will know <laughs> when Novak has hit his peak when Wheels start screaming, Novak, yes, Vac. Yes, oh my gosh. Look, I Wheels Wheels said it. To, Will said it to me. He's a fan of Novak. Outside of his name, he really thinks he can ball. I think for them, him being the big dog for uh, no disrespect to Valor, but just like a mid-table, lower end of the league, like club. Like as Ali said, they don't have the resources. So for him, me being like a big dog, that could also help. You know, mm-hmm. a guy that people are like, hey, you got to perform. Um, and almost maybe don't have to defend that much, but just go and, and bang some goals and keep us in keep us in the race. Listen, Valor had some surprise results last year. I mean, they were, they were part of some 
big losses and they were a part of some, you know, big wins, but they also haven't really received a lot of attention. I don't know if that's because of the moves, Ollie, that yeah. they just don't feel like this sexy team that you want to talk about. But I mean, could that work to their advantage that they're not necessarily making headlines in the off season? Yeah, maybe. I, th- I think you're right. Like, I think they're like, probably the least talked about team, least fancy team in this league. Like, uh, Vancouver maybe comes into that conversation as well, but I think there's a bit more interest in them as an expansion team, even if they're going to be an underdog in their first season. Valor, I just don't really hear many people talking about. People think Halifax have got better. People think York have got better. The other four are, are you know, established playoff teams at, at this point. No one really mentions Valor. So, like, like I said earlier, I think maybe there's... You know, maybe it's just the case that they tried to get a load more high profile players and they didn't get any of them, in which case you'd be a bit mm. concerned. Maybe it's the case, though, like I said before, that that was a bit more deliberate and a bit more part of the strategy. And what I would say is, is that I think what Atletico Ottawa did last year, where the team was a lot older than most CPL teams have been, a lot more defensively oriented than most CPL teams to this point have been they won the regular season and hosted a final. Like, I think that's going to change the calculation a bit for some teams that maybe we don't have to always have the ball play really attacking soccer and you can have success in, in different ways in this league. Yeah. How are yeah. you feeling about them there? Jordan? I mean, would you consider this team? And I mean, maybe you alluded to it. You could be fourth or fifth and, you know, based on this new playoff structure, but do you consider them a legitimate contender for a playoff spot? They, they again, I, I've looked at the league from before, but playing in it the past two years has been different. Like Valor's a team that always flirts with playoffs, flirts with that spot. Like they're like, Hey, they can make it the past two years. That's what it's been like coming down to the last couple of games, they could do it. And then kind of just fell short. Um, So they might just need, I'm not even going to say a goal scorer, but just might need a few more players that could add to their success. And they're there. Like, look, I hope my York fans don't kill me, but now that I'm with you guys, a spade, I got to call a spade a spade. The Yorks, the Halifax, the Valors, they could all be right in the bubble. I can't imagine a Forge, Calvary, even Pacific, really not being in the top three, four teams uh, in this league. So you're really kind of battling um, for that little fourth or fifth place spot. And I think Valor could take that, but the past two seasons, they've just fallen short towards the end. So it's like, can they peak as the season's about to end and really take off in the playoffs? Yeah, Ollie, last word goes to you on Valor. And I was trying to think of that that's... game. I couldn't remember it. It was 6-1 over Atletico Ottawa. I just needed to look Right, that. right. Yeah. Well, that's the thing with them. And, and like Jordan just said as well, they've been really streaky. They've had like great spells of form, like in the bubble, obviously, when they were playing at home and they came flying out of the blocks and they've mm-hmm. had absolutely terrible runs that, that have kind of destroyed their season. So consistency is just a big thing for them. Um, you know, being able to... To, to not get yourself in one of those those streaks that like again it's not that long a season if you go six games or something like sorry jordan but you you, you know this from last season <laughs> <laughs> if you have one of those types of runs like it kind of it kind of ruins the season there and then right like it's, it's difficult to come back from 